Hey guys, welcome back to yet another session of our class 10 ICSE biology series. I'm Ambika, master teacher of biology right here at Vedantu. I hope all of you had a wonderful Diwali. Yes, I also enjoyed a lot with my family, had an amazing time and had a lot of sweets. And I hope you have also managed to pump in enough glucose in biological terms, enough glucose into your blood so that you can be very, very energetic for the rest of the week. Yes. So if there's anything specific about your Diwali celebrations that you would like to share with me, please do post it in the comment section below here. If you would like to share it with all of us, we would all be delighted to read it. Anyway, coming back after the festivities, after all the festive mode, getting back to academics. You know that we are well into our ICSE class 10 biology chapters and we have already started with human physiology. The circulatory system in human beings is the very first chapter in this unit that we started off with, right? And we have had one session already wherein we discussed the structure of the human heart. So in today's session, we shall be continuing with the human heart. So I sincerely hope that you have attended my previous session. If not, please do make it a point and watch the video that was premiered yesterday so that you have a clear understanding of what we are going to be discussing today, right? Because we will not be able to discuss each and every detail again in today's session. Okay, but before that, as always, let us start with the motivated mindset. In life, nobody and nothing will help you until you start helping yourself. Of course, I am here to help you. All the teachers here at Vedantu are here to help you. Your parents, your family, friends, teachers, everyone is there always for support. But nothing will help completely unless you start helping yourself. I have been telling you this in different ways uh, in almost every session of ours. What I mean here is that nothing at all is going to help unless you have a clear cut goal in your mind and you have developed a sincere and strong, a very strong desire to succeed. That is what you need to do when you are trying to help yourself. Once a desire is there, everything else automatically follows. Okay, so keeping that in mind, let us get started. Let's discuss the homework question that I had given you. Why is there a separate set of blood vessels between the heart and lungs? Why is it significant is what I'm asking. So I did get uh, a, one, a lot of wonderful answers from many of you but yes uh, due to space constraints I could not put in everyone's uh, image here but I took the screenshot of, the, uh, of one of the first few answers that I got which was also decently explanatory enough and that was from Vatan Kumar thank you Vatan uh, and Vatan says to avoid mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood as our body needs a large amount of of energy yes this is correct and most of you have given me pretty much the same answer what I meant to ask you in the first place was that we are talking about circulation of blood from the heart to different parts of the body why is it that the lungs are not considered as part of the different uh, you know the rest of the body heart and lungs is a separate path heart and the rest of the body is a separate path why is that essential is the meaning of this question and yes all of you have uh, all of you seem to have understood it pretty well because in our body all of our cells need energy to perform all of their uh, activities our cells need energy and for the cells to be able to produce energy most of them need a lot of oxygen right and if oxygen has to be transported to every cell of our body who does the job the blood has to help and carry oxygen and transport and uh, make sure it reaches every cell of our body right which means there is a very very close association between your circulatory system and your respiratory system so if there is deoxygenated blood that's going back to your heart from the rest of your body that again has to get oxygenated and this would happen only if that blood is sent to the lungs and 
then the lungs gives it the oxygen that we have inhaled in and then that oxygen or oxygenated blood is pumped to the rest of the body and the cycle continues. Yes? So those of you who have this concept very clear in your mind, I think you are the ones who have given me the correct answer to this. Thank you very much Vatan and everyone else who has given me the answers. Again, Hasani, I have been seeing that you've been sending me um, a snapshots or uh, snips of your handwritten notes as, your, as the homework question answers through email. Uh, I'm very happy to see that you've been continuing to be such a sincere student. Do keep it up and I hope to uh, have the same amount of participation from all of you children in all our sessions for the coming days okay so now let us go ahead and revise or recap what we have done in the previous session I want you all to give me quick answers for these which of these protects the heart from mechanical injury and shock platelets pericardium aorta lungs Yes, and the answer is pericardium, which is the double-layered membrane that protects the heart. Yes, we've seen that already in the previous session. The next one, dash carry blood away from the heart and dash carry blood towards the heart. I told you a very small and simple trick also to remember this in our previous session. Those of you who remember that will be able to answer this right. Even if you can answer it right otherwise, that's absolutely great. Yes, and the answer is arteries carry blood away from the heart and veins carry blood towards the heart. Remember the trick? Artery away, A and A, right? Veins would be the opposite. They bring, carry blood towards the heart, okay? And now, which of these carries blood to the heart from the upper body parts? Yes, children, very quickly. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And the answer is the superior vena cava because the aorta, as you can see, among all the four options that I've given you, the aorta is the only one that is in artery. All the other three are veins. And among these three, Pulmonary vein, like the name tells you, pulmonary is between the heart and the lungs and the vein brings it to the heart. So the vein that brings blood from the lungs to the heart is what is the pulmonary vein. What about the inferior and the superior vena cava? Both of them are um, closely associated. Both of them bring blood, deoxygenated blood from a lot of your body parts and empty into the right atrium. But like the name tells you, superior vena cava or the anterior vena cava carries blood from the upper body parts while the inferior vena cava carries it from the lower body parts or your abdominal body parts. Okay, so I hope that is very, very clear. And we have one more question. The mitral valve guards the opening between. Yes, children. Again, we have discussed this multiple times in our previous session. You should be able to get this right. Yes, and three, two, one, go. The answer is the left atrium and the left ventricle. Just in case you don't remember it, have a look at this image. This is the mitral valve and that is exactly what I have asked you in the question. Where do you see the mitral valve? You see that it is at the junction between the left atrium and the left ventricle, right? And the other one, the other valve which is at the junction between the right atrium and the right ventricle is the tricuspid valve. You also call the mitral valve by another name that is the bi cuspid valve okay so this was exactly the question i hope you remember all of these parts of the heart that we have discussed the major blood vessels the chambers of the heart and the valves of the heart okay so as long as you have a clear and thorough understanding of these basics we are definitely good to go on to the next slide which is all about circulation of blood how does the blood pumped by the heart 
reach every cell of your body. Now we have seen or we know that the heart is present somewhere between the lungs right in your thoracic cavity within your rib cage. It's protected by the rib cage and is present between the right and the left lobes of your lungs right. We have seen that and it's pretty much a small organ like uh, roughly the size of a closed human fist. Being such a small organ how is it that the blood that it pumps reaches every cell of your body? Remember we've discussed that the human body is made up of trillions of cells, right? How is it that trillions of cells are able to receive the blood pumped by such a small organ? That too, something that's in the thoracic cavity, something that's towards the upper, something that's in the upper body, uh, upper half of the body right? So this is where the efficiency of our circulatory system comes into picture. We know that the heart takes the help of the major blood vessels which are uh, broadly the arteries, veins and capillaries. We have also seen the names of the major um, veins. These are the four major veins, the uh, anterior vena cava, the posterior vena cava, the coronary veins and the pulmonary veins and the major arteries are the pulmonary artery, the aorta and the coronary arteries. These, all of these along with the capillaries which are very very fine and thin walled blood vessels together are able to transport blood to your tissues and hence to your cells. Okay, so let us look at a schematic diagram of the pathway of circulation in the human body. Okay, so here what I have represented is the human heart as you can see. Yes, children, the human heart is here and this is uh, just a human silhouette to show the rest of your body parts, to show uh, to what parts of your body roughly the oxygenated blood is pumped and the deoxygenated blood is carried from your body to the heart. And here we've shown the lungs. Remember, we uh, ended off the previous session and started today's session discussing the importance of these two separate pathways. Right. So like the name indicates the pathway of blood that happens between the lungs and the heart is called pulmonary circulation or pulmonary circuit. Okay. Palmo has got something to do with the lungs. The other pathway which is involved between which is uh, which is a deal between your heart and the rest of your body parts except the lungs is called systemic circuit or systemic circulation. Okay, so the same blood oxygenated and deoxygenated. Okay, at the end of the session, this will be much clearer to you. So just understand for now that the same blood flows through your heart twice. Okay, we are talking about systemic circulation and pulmonary circulation and hence we call that double circulation. Okay, we describe it as double circulation and why is it important? Well, yes, a lot of you have given me the answers to that already because mammals like human beings um, are higher vertebrates, right? Higher chordates and there is a lot of energy requirement for us to have, for us, for our body to meet all our energy needs. A very very efficient circulatory system is essential because of which to save a lot of time and energy and improve efficiency we have two separate pathways pulmonary and systemic okay so have that idea very very clear in your mind now how does this happen it's a pathway I understand yes all of us understand where do we start let us start with the right side okay the right atrium as you can see is right here. What is it that the right atrium receives? Let's start right from there. The right atrium receives blood from the vena cava or vena, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava together called vena cava okay in plural. What does it bring? It brings in deoxygenated blood from the upper body parts and the lower body parts superior and inferior respectively okay they bring in deoxygenated blood which is what is represented in blue here 
okay deoxygenated blood is brought into the right atrium what happens next where does it go of course this blood would flow into the right ventricle when the atrium contracts the right ventricle is exactly this chamber that you can see okay now once it enters the right atrium sorry once it enters the right ventricle when the right ventricle contracts once it fills up and is ready to contract what happens next it gets pumped into the pulmonary arteries okay and the pulmonary artery would take it to the lobes of the lungs the left pulmonary artery would carry deoxygenated blood to the left lobe of the lung and the right pulmonary artery to the right lobe of the lung okay this is why we have a left and right pulmonary artery and a left and right pulmonary vein okay children listen very carefully this is an extremely important concept the better your concentration is with me in the next 10 minutes things are going to be much easier for you okay this will be retained in your head and once you sit down to read your textbook things will make much better sense to you i assure you you will not have to spend hours and hours trying to understand how double circulation happens okay so we have come to the right atrium which and then to the right ventricle and from the right ventricle we have entered the pulmonary arteries and then the lungs yes of course what happens in the lungs obviously it is oxygen take up the lungs has enough oxygen in the alveoli because we keep inhaling oxygen right so the oxygen that's been taken up by us from the alveoli diffuse into the blood capillaries and from there the oxygen diffuses into the blood and the oxygenated blood is what comes out next where does it come the pulmonary vein would carry the oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium okay children it brings it to the left atrium this part So like I said in the case of arteries the left pulmonary vein carries blood from the left lobe of the lung and the right pulmonary vein from the right lobe of the lung and anyway everything drains out into the left atrium right here and when the left atrium contracts that blood flows into the left ventricle yes children left atrium or the left auricle to the left ventricle once the left ventricle is filled up with oxygenated blood it is ready for a round of contraction and what happens to that blood the left ventricle contracts and the blood gets into the biggest artery of your body which is the yes the aorta as you can see here the aorta and its branches why is it the largest artery you understand that now i suppose because this is the artery that has to carry blood from the heart and pump it in enough force so that blood reaches forcefully reaches every single cell of your body even in parts far and wide away from the heart like our feet right so because it has such a big responsibility the aorta is very strong and is called the largest artery of our body okay so once again and after that what happens it comes through the branches of the aorta and they branch out further into smaller uh, arterioles and capillaries and finally all the capillaries go in touch with are always in touch with your tissues and cells so that through the thin walls of the capillaries exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide can happen so what happens is the oxygen that this blood has brought in diffuses from the capillaries into your cells and the carbon dioxide that has formed in your cells due to cellular respiration diffuses from your cells into the capillaries and these capillaries go back and join the vena cava to drain into your right atrium this is exactly how circulation happens okay so once again 
starting with deoxygenated blood let's talk about the bad stuff first because of which i wanted to start with the right atrium okay the deoxygenated blood collected by the vena cavae get drained into your right atrium that enters your right ventricle which on contraction gets pumped into your pulmonary arteries and they carry it to the lungs for oxygenation and after oxygenation the oxygenated blood is brought in by the pulmonary veins into the left atrium of your heart this is followed by the left ventricle and then on contraction of the left ventricle it enters the aorta and through the aorta it gets pumped and distributed to all the body cells by the branches of the aorta the arterioles the smaller finest capillaries and oxygen diffuses into your cells and from there carbon dioxide diffuses back into your blood from the cells and that is carried into your right atrium by the vena cavae okay now tell me children why is it that we represent oxygen rich blood in red color yes i'm sure you're all smart enough to answer me yes it is indeed because of the presence of hemoglobin which is the pigment in your blood in your rbcs that has the ability to carry oxygen and when hemoglobin holds on to a lot of oxygen molecules you see that blood human blood is bright red in color not that otherwise uh, when it is rich in carbon dioxide it's uh, royal blue or really deep blue in color that's not the case but just for ease of understanding we represent it like this but then uh, remember that when it is deoxygenated blood that's uh, carried by your veins carried by your blood um, it does have a much lesser a brighter shade of red it is still red but has a bluish tinge to it if you actually observe the veins that you see here in your wrist for some of us uh, you can really see the blue color very clearly for some of us um, it's not seen very clearly okay so uh, just in case you've been wondering if blood is actually blue because you can see a blue shade here well it's not completely true uh, it is hemoglobin that gives color to your blood which is definitely red but then when oxygen concentration or oxygen saturation is less the brightness of red is less tends to be less which is why the bluish shade uh, is visible to us okay and now let us do a very small exercise um i have put empty boxes here we, what we are going to do now is we are going to draw a schematic uh, flow chart of how blood flows in your body okay so based on our understanding based on the last 5 minutes explanation that i have given you we are going to be doing this together okay so let's get started children as i told you I always like to finish off the bad stuff first so let's do the deoxygenated part first where does deoxygenated uh, blood come into your heart first yes into your right atrium and this is what i would like to mark as your right atrium and who brings it into the right atrium it is most certainly your superior and inferior vena cavae where does it bring it from it brings it from the rest of your body i would like to label this as rest of the body rest of body or you can just call it body parts whatever will help you remember call it that okay so now let's look at where it goes from the right auricle deoxygenated blood goes into the right ventricle right and when the right ventricle contracts where does it go it goes yes through another blood vessel who carries this deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle when it contracts it is most certainly your pulmonary artery now let me tell you children here um, most of you may get confused here whether it's the pulmonary vein or the pulmonary artery as i told you the simplest thing is to keep in mind that arteries always whatever artery you're talking about they always carry blood away from the heart okay so away from the right ventricle and taking it towards 
which organ would that be yes it would be your lungs into your lungs and what happens in the lungs oxygenation happens and now we can happily use the red marker yes and from the lungs oxygenated blood is collected by somebody somebody is there to collect everything that's uh, gone into the retreat center and become very good got rid of all the bad stuff has got a lot of good stuff and who is there to pick them up it is the pulmonary veins the pulmonary veins pick them up and they drain them into the left auricle and from the left auricle contraction pushes it into the left ventricle and yes now that your good blood has been filled in your left ventricle it can be happily and easily distributed to all your body parts but we require activity by somebody very very important and that is your aorta which transports it to the rest of your body okay so this is how the schematic representation of blood circulation in the human body system the human circulatory system would look like okay have a look at this children note it down if you want to or i suggest you have a note of this somewhere even if you draw this from your memory after my session that's perfectly fine in fact that would be better because um, the more you are able to recall from your memory and write it down um, put it um, onto pen using pen and paper put it onto a paper i'm sure that means you will never forget it for the rest of your life so try and pictureize this in your mind how this happened and then go ahead and draw it but then i think it should be there as a handy tool for your revision in your last minute when you want to know how circulation happens now let us go on to understand the conduction of the heart we know that the heart is one of the most hard working organs of our body right so because of this it needs to uh, keep up with the pace it needs to keep up with um, our energy requirements all the time like beating faster whenever required beating slower whenever required and so on because of this um, you can call it a fascinating um, you know creation of nature but how does it manage to do this it's in fact got something in itself the heart has got a part in itself um to set its rhythm the tal box like if you say if those of you who are familiar to uh, indian music would know what tal means the rhythm or the pace to make the pace or to create the rhythm you need something and in your heart that role is taken up by something called the sinoatrial node short form is the sa node abbreviated as the sa node right children the sa node or the sinoatrial node where do you see it in this image you see that this part okay it's basically just a cluster of cells okay i'm saying just a cluster of cells but remember they are not just something they are the natural pacemaker of your heart what do they do these cluster of cells generate or um, start the nerve impulses which can be spread across the heart so that the signals keep getting transmitted uh, how does it do this uh, not by itself in fact um, it works closely in association with other clusters of cells one of which is the av node or the atrioventricular node which is situated at towards the base of the right atrium okay and after this once the signal is generated by the sa node and reaches the av node it further transmits from the av node into another set of another bundle known as the bundle of his okay bundle of his or it's also called the his bundle okay so that again further branches into a left branch and a right branch the right branch and the left branch of the bundle of his which further branch out into smaller branches which are ultimately called the purkinje fibers and they are 
the finest units of this system of the conduction system and this is how the heartbeat is generated or the heart impulses are generated because the heart is able to the human heart is able to do it on its own it doesn't need any external help of course it needs help from the nervous system the nervous system and circulatory system here closely work with each other but it doesn't really wait for something to like it doesn't wait for a signal from the brain to uh, you know it, it doesn't wait for a signal from the brain such that um, it wants somebody to tell it okay start beating no not really like that it is self motivated which is why we call the human heart self excitatory we describe the human heart as self excitatory okay children remember these names they are very important the sa node or the sinoatrial node which is also called the pacemaker of the heart and from there the nerves are the nerve impulses are spread to the av node and then to the bundle of his which has a right and left branch and further it branches into the purkinje fibers remember these four names okay when you are asked to write about the conduction of the heart this is exactly what you should be able to write with an image all the more better just draw an outline of the heart mark the clusters of cells exactly at the right points and draw arrows and explain it that's it it will fetch you full marks okay now let's look at how this happens as you can see it generates at the sa node and then the av node it spreads across to the bundle of his and then finally the purkinje fibers and then of course the heart muscles are all there so they can keep beating contracting and relaxing okay so have a look at that all right and now yes this is the simplest image that we can think of when we are talking about heartbeat right or just a normal heart shape the the heart that we know about the love heart that we know about right so uh, whatever it is heartbeat is something that we all um, have perhaps felt but how many of you have thought about what goes into it why is the heart beating what is it trying to tell you the heart beat in fact occurs in two phases one is called the systole and the second one is called diastole we know that the heart contracts and it also relaxes the contraction is what we call systole and relaxation is what we call diastole okay so because of alternate contraction and relaxation we get to hear or we get to listen to the sounds of the heart which we hear as the heart beat but again something more specific there is also a name given to these sounds um, how many of you have heard the sound of the heart using a stethoscope right some of you have i have also listened to it um, there is a name given to the sounds lub and dup okay lub is the sound that is given to the stage at the start of the ventricular systole now if you can see in this image here you can see highlighted in green ventricular systole what happens then when the ventricles are about to contract that means that the atrioventricular valves okay the valves at the junction between atria and ventricles are closing the closure of the av valves is followed by the start of ventricular contraction or systole so this closure is what results in the first sound which is lub okay closure of av valves lub av valves l a v keep that in mind okay what about the second sound dup it is produced when the semi lunar valves are closed remember the semi lunar valves those um, moon shaped valves that we spoke about at the junction between ventricles and the pulmonary artery and the aorta right so when those are closed which occurs when ventricles are about to relax ventricular diastole is when the second sound dup is heard okay this is also something very important although it sounds like a very casual sound lup dup lup 
dub yes it is absolutely musical and this is the natural musicality that your body has one of the natural musicalities that your body has lub and dub and why why are these produced how are these produced it is because of atrioventricular valves closure and semi lunar valves closure respectively this is again very very important to know understand this before you go ahead and answer any question in this topic okay children and yes this is a question that i want you to come up with an answer for i want you to do this as an activity just feel your heartbeat okay feel your heartbeat and count see uh, keep a timer in front of you see how many times you can feel the heartbeat in one minute it can be different for different people there can be a standard value also yes uh, if you just google up for how many times your heart beats per minute you would get a standard standard answer but i want you to try this out and then come up with answers okay let us have a very short quiz time and see how many of you have understood what we learned in today's session which of these is the pacemaker of the heart yes 5 4 3 2 1 go the answer is most certainly the sa node or the sinoatrial node all arteries carry oxygenated blood except the dash 5 4 3 2 1 and go the answer is your pulmonary artery so basically just keep in mind that all arteries except your pulmonary artery carries oxygenated blood and all veins except your pulmonary veins carry deoxygenated blood think instead of memorizing this think about what they do artery and vein away from the heart towards the heart and if it's pulmonary it will be away from the lungs away from the heart to the lungs or away from the lungs to the heart depending on that logic i'm sure you will be able to answer this particular question the next one the heart sound lub is produced during yes this can be a little confusing but this was the last thing that we learned today so i hope you would remember this now lub the first sound lub 3 2 1 go yes we have two answers closure of the av valves because of which ventricular contraction is about to begin so b and c both can be the correct answers okay and yes we come to the end of today's session but as homework i want you to answer this question list out the differences between arteries and veins how are capillaries different from them okay i don't want a bookish answer again based on your understanding bring out the differences between arteries and veins first and after you have made that comparison compare the capillaries with the arteries and veins okay so i want to see who is coming up with the best and quickest answer and in the meantime children do not forget to download vedantu's learning app stay in touch with us through the telegram group and most importantly do remember to hit the like button if you have understood everything that we discussed in this session do remember to share it with all your near and dear ones whoever you think will benefit from this i think cbse children will also benefit from this because of the chapter life processes and of course do remember to subscribe to our channel vedantu 9th and 10th because we have just started and we are well into biology we have a lot more amazing surprises amazing sessions coming for you in the weeks to come make sure you don't miss any of them and until we meet again if you have any questions that i can help you with do remember to send me an email at my email id or post your questions in the comment section below um if not immediately i generally respond to emails and comments within 2 to 3 days whenever i find time but remember that i keep reading all of your chats all of your messages all of your emails i never miss out on any of them so keep continuing to be very very active in the same way and until we meet again in yet another session of the chapter circulatory system this is ambika signing off and bye bye